We met Evelyn Katabizi in a foster home in Kampala, Uganda. A little girl with big problems and great hopes. Before bed, I asked her what she dreams of. When I'm with, with my mother. You dream of your mother? Yes. Where is your mother? She died. The mother died of AIDS. Her father too, and Evelyn is HIV positive. Her days begin and end with drugs. She came here age two, close to death. Today, aged eight, she's thriving. She has friends and is accepted by everybody. At school, her favorite subjects are maths and English. But life is a struggle for this little girl who is wise beyond her years. This is her school book. So Eva in here, under the name of the school, says School of Struggle. And the class, instead of science or mathematics or something, she has written Class of Hope. School of Struggle, Class of Hope. And what does she hope for? When she grows up, Evelyn wants to be a pilot. Back at the home, the children eat together. Rice, beans, fried onions. Some children with HIV, some without. And pray together. Who is your best friend? <laughs> All of them. I'm sure they love you very much. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Just one little girl among many thousands here fighting AIDS and hoping for a better life. Martin Fletcher, NBC News, Kampala, Uganda. It's daybreak and the children help each other. They're orphans, but that's just the beginning of their troubles. How many of the children have HIV? They're 22. 22? Yeah. Did you take tea? Nolina Namukiza founded this foster home in Uganda's capital 14 years ago, after a sick prostitute asked Nolina to bring poison so she could kill herself and her two daughters, Sonia and Loy. She knew that the moment she dies and leaves these children, they are going to go into the same thing which the mother faced. So Prosti prostitution yeah, and HIV. Because they are, yeah, because they are girls. Instead, yeah. Nalina they took them HIV? home and no. her battle against They're AIDS negative. began. In those days, they ate under a tree. Today, thanks to donations, there's a house and a school. So you have to ask him. Vocational training, like sewing, gives these orphans a trade helping them to avoid prostitution. 80% of the home's costs are paid by America. You abstain from sex before you're married. In the same room, they have sex education once a week. And singers spread the message of ABC, abstinence, be faithful in marriage, and condoms. Condom distribution is not a policy pushed by the Bush administration. That's a problem for American aid workers like Stephanie Robertson. President Bush doesn't really like us to talk about condoms. Still, the difference over condoms has not stopped Washington from paying for all the children's HIV drugs. It's bedtime. Orphans given a second chance by American aid. Remember the little girls, Sonia and Loi, whose mother wanted to poison them? Today, they're healthy, happy girls, free of HIV. Thanks to a caring woman and American help. Martin Fletcher, NBC News, Kampala, Uganda. Let's go out of rain. It's been a long journey and a short time for Rwanda, from genocide to peace in 14 years. But dreadful memories. At the church in Tarama, Hutus massacred 5,000 Tutsis in just three hours. This is the church at Tarama today. It's a memorial to the Rwandan genocide. Throughout the country, there are 200 memorials like this. Here, there are rows and rows of skulls killed in different ways. This one, a bullet hole, most of the Skulls here have been smashed with clubs. This one here still has the tip of a spear sticking out of it. Tutsis didn't seek revenge, but reconciliation.
Today, the basis of the killing, the difference between Tutsis and Hutus, has gone, says this former Tutsi soldier. Today, we are all Rwandan. There's nothing like saying you are a Hutu, you are a Tutsi. We have one ID, we speak the same language, and we want one people. Hundreds of thousands of Hutu killers were jailed in pink to humiliate them. But in a remarkable process of local justice, if killers apologize to their neighbors, their prison terms can be reduced. There are 12,000 of these courts. Once a week, about 1.2 million Rwandans out of about 7 million attend these kinds of courts, listening, judging, and maybe forgiving. Like these two men, both named Emmanuel, a killer and a victim. Emmanuel the killer, a murderer in the church at Tarama. I cut them. Yeah, I used the machete. Where did you cut them? Uh -huh. Here and there. Yeah. And you killed them? Yes, I killed them. They are a woman and her daughter, this man's cousins. Emmanuel, the victim. He says he apologized and must accept and forgive. So now they're neighbors, even praying together. Over the road from the ruined church, with its memories and its message, never again. Marvin Fetcher, NBC News, Baseru, Rwanda. Larry Waters retired, they found their dream home in Africa. We didn't start out wanting to be pioneers. We just wanted a beautiful place on the ocean that we could afford. They sold their modest condo in Odenton, Maryland, and are building a 9,000 square feet mansion in Ghana, West Africa. This is the seating area where we're entering now. Part of the growing trend among African Americans, back to Africa. Stand and let us know who you are. 5,000 so African Americans now live on the continent. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many in Accra, Ghana, there's a monthly meeting. And whatever it is we do, we need to do it together. Where newcomers can get tips about settling in. We moved here six years ago. It's much more than just a comfortable retirement, though. Miriam Waters' ancestors left Africa <laughs> as slaves. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Africans were kept in places like this as slaves to be sold in many countries, including America. The sun's shining now, but this is a dark place with dark memories for African Americans. Millions of victims of the slave trade. Is this a homecoming for you? This is truly a homecoming. It really is. And I am so glad to be here. I am so glad to be here. This is my home. So some African Americans are doing more than just retiring, but putting down roots by giving back. Enoch and Legretta Butler have helped African children for 14 years. Donations from America are putting all of these children through school. Come here. <laughs> How are you? Oh, fine. Oh, so glad to have yeah. you. Money goes to dig wells, provide clean water, buy books. The waters say when they get settled, they also want to find a way to help local Africans. We're here to help wherever we can. But first, they need to finish their dream home. Their oceanfront property costs less than $20,000. The house, about another $250,000. African Americans doing good and living cheap. Martin Fletcher, NBC News, Accra, Ghana.